We took a trip to Slovakia, the ancestral home of Sue's mother's family. It was great. We started off with some of the big city sites. Then we rented a car and got out into the countryside. Towering old castles. Villages to wander in. Fantastic caves. Folk art that boggles the mind. And smaller cities, not bustling like the capital, but with their own kind of charm. It was in one of these towns that a small man approached us on the street and flashed a ticket he was holding. Take, free, no money, he said with a toothy grin. Once we had a look at it, we liked what we saw. After all, Franz Schubert was a favorite composer of ours. This would be a small town to explore, not too many kilometers away. The guy probably was paid by the Chamber of Commerce or something, so there was no obligation. Our minds were made up. The car rental place had given us a rattly old Škoda. They said it was all they had left, which pissed us off, but what could we do? We tuned the radio to a station that seemed good for heading into Schubert Land. The GPS navigation voice lady was kind of strange. She always talked to us in bizarre English, but now she directed us to a supermarket instead of the Schubert house. We found our way there. It's not a large town. There was this weird guy in front when we got there. But he went away eventually, and we hung around until the curator showed up. It turned out his name was Mr. Polka, Pavel Polka, and he was a very odd duck indeed. Jak se páči, srdečně vás vítám v Žilinské pamětné izbě Franca Schuberta. Once he welcomed us inside, it was clear that he thought of it as his museum. It was filled with musical items from when Schubert taught the royal Esterhazy children, and also tons of artifacts of the region's history, which he could not stop talking about. I think that there is a mystic, for example, when he goes to this place, a person like I was, I was in the 40s, maybe in the 40s, and I was there. Ancient coins, relics of the late Stone Age, bric-a-brac of military history. Schubert's piano, horribly out of tune, but still kind of playable, and also his glasses. And just piles and piles of stuff. We looked at each other and raised our eyebrows. It turned out that Pavel Polka was the town historian besides the museum curator, and he was passionate about his town. Floods of words came spilling out in a mixture of English, Slovak, and Hungarian for five, ten, twenty minutes at a time. Look, look, he would crow, rummaging in a box of stuff. After a while, we started making our excuses to Mr. Polka. We had to meet a friend in a nearby town, stuff like that and soon we were back on the road. His enthusiasm had been absolutely exhausting. We felt like we'd escaped his gravitational pull with great difficulty, and it really was an escape. It's too bad his zeal was so powerfully tiring. It's good to be passionate about history and about where you come from, but knowing it's good doesn't make it any easier to be around. Anyway, we would have to do something completely different to decompress. Where we ended up didn't really do the job.
We got a really bizarre station on the radio. Anything to get the past few hours out of our heads. Get our groove back. 